In this video we are going to be looking at computational logic. Um, there are three logic gates that you need to understand. You also need to know the symbols for those logic gates and you need to know uh, how to write those symbols in what is known as a Boolean equation um, or Boolean algebra. Um, so we'll be having a look at all of that. We'll be looking at truth tables as well and we'll be looking at what happens uh, to the inputs of a system when they are run through uh, a number of logic gates uh, joined together. Okay, so without further ado, let's turn the background off there and here we go. So um, these are two people who are essentially the uh, fathers of, of logic if you like. Over here we have uh, Augustus de Morgan who uh, you will need to be familiar with if you're doing A-level uh, and over here we have George Boole uh, who lends his name to uh, the Boolean data type. Um, he was the guy that came up with this concept of having uh, two values, true and false or on and off, uh, and uh, applying applying logic to them. You can read all about these two people on Wikipedia. You don't need to know specifically about them for the uh, for the GCSE, uh, but it's it makes for some interest in reading. Um, so I have created a um, a website. Let's just bring up my website here. Um, okay, here we go. So um, the web address, I should say, for this website is right here, binary.666.co.uk. Um, it might be worth your while just pausing the video, going to this website and having a play around with the different symbols. So on the website there are a number of um, logic gates with their appropriate symbols. And if I just bring this back here, um, you can see the first three gates on there, the AND gate, the OR gate and the NOT gate, they all have these little checkboxes next to them. You can't change the um, the output checkboxes but you can change the input checkboxes and when you click on the inputs depending on the combination of your inputs you will see that the output uh, either turns itself on or turns itself off. Okay, I've deliberately created this so that you can experiment and see how these different things work. Um, now the three gates that you need to know about for GCSE are the AND gate, the OR gate and the NOT gate. Um, in the interests of completeness I have also added these four gates the NAND gate, the NOR gate, the XOR gate and the XNOR gate which you don't need to know about for GCSE um, but they are fairly important in terms of um, how logic is processed inside the uh, the CPU. So if you want to learn that little bit extra um, you can you can experiment with some of those. Uh, at the bottom there is a, uh, a little game. If I click on here you can see there's a, it's even got its own storyline and everything. Um, it's written in JavaScript. It's easy to cheat and give yourself extra points and uh, skip ahead to extra missions and stuff like that. Uh, but really um, the whole point of it is you go through it so that you can uh, understand how these different things work and test your knowledge. So if you cheat to get ahead, you're not you're not really, you know, not really winning. You're just cheating yourself. Um, so it's probably worth you pausing the video and having a play around with this. Um, if you've paused it and then come back, or if you can't be bothered with that and you just want to hear me talk, uh, let me just go through what's going on here. The AND gate. Um, the symbol for the AND gate has a flat line at the back and it looks like a, a sideways cup I guess. Um, the output of an AND gate will only be on if both of the inputs are on. So you can see at the moment they're both off, the output is off. If I turn one of them on, the output is still off. If I turn the other one on, the output is still off. But if I turn them both on, the output is now on. Okay, An OR gate an OR gate, the symbol for an OR gate, instead of having a flat line at the back, it's got a bent line at the back. Now, when you're drawing these, because you will be asked to draw these in the exam if you get a, uh, a, a question on this, um, it's sometimes difficult to make the pointy bit on the OR gate when you're drawing in a hurry, uh, and sometimes your gates will end up looking like AND gates. Now, that's not necessarily a problem as long as you make sure that the back line is curved. Okay, make sure the back line is curved. Now on OR gate, the output will be 
on when either of the two inputs is on. So at the moment you can see they're both off and the output is off. If I turn one of them on, the output comes on. If I turn the other one on, the output comes on. Now, this is a very important point. If they are both on, the output is still on. Okay, a lot of people uh, make the mistake of thinking that uh, it's only going to output one when either of the two is on. But if they're both on, then it will also output um, uh, some some value. Some value will output one. Okay, um, it is the XOR gate which doesn't. I'll scroll down to that in a minute. Uh, so the NOT gate. The NOT gate, very simple, it's also known as an inverter. If the input is 0, the output will be 1. If the input is 1, the output will be 0. That's basically how that works. Okay. Now, the reason why you need to know these three gates above all others is because any other logical circuit can be built using a combination of these three gates. In truth, any logical circuit can be built with a combination of nothing but NAND gates, but you'll look at that when you go on to A-level if you do. Okay, So the NAND gate, uh, the NOR gate, and the XOR gate, I'm not going to spend too much time going on over those. You can experiment with those. Um, I will just go over the XOR gate, uh, short for exclusive OR. That's the one where the output will be off if they're both off. If one of them is on then the output will be on. If they're both on, the output will be off. Okay, so when it comes to uh, to XOR, don't mess, me mix it up with the OR gate. Remember the OR gate, it's only off if they are both off. Okay, so there's that website, binary.666.com. Um, .co.uk. You can have a play around with that. Um, there is another website which I will put a, uh, a link to uh, which is called Logically, logic.ly and this is a great website where you can um, uh, experiment with building different logic circuits. So as an example if I wanted to build an AND gate circuit I can drag my, uh, my AND gate from my, uh, from my toolbox over here. Um, can I zoom in? Yes I can zoom in. Good. Um, Okay. Uh, I can also add some switches. Let's add two switches there, and I can add an output like this. I can then join these. Um, I should be able. Oh, there we go. I can join these um, together, and then my circuit will behave like an AND gate. And the great thing about logically is that you can see the different parts of the circuit lighting up as necessary. Now that's going to come in handy a little bit later on when we start looking at compound uh, logic circuits. So if I turn this one on I get no output. If I turn that one on I get no output. If I turn both of them on you can see that uh, the, the bulb illuminates there. Okay, so it's worth pausing the video and just taking some time to experiment with some of those uh, some of those different things especially on this on this website here um, and um, and we will come back to that shortly. Now, one of the things that you need to know about is the truth table. Okay, so a truth table is basically it's a list of outputs for a combination of given inputs. Okay, so here we go. This is a well, what kind of gate is that? You tell me. If you said it was an AND gate, then you are correct. Well done. Um, so the output of an AND gate will only be 1 if both of the inputs are 1. So the way to read a truth table is like this. Here is input A is in this column here. Input B is in this column here. Output Q is in this column here. So as we read along, we can see that input A is 0. Input B is 0. Because both input A and input B are 0, the output is going to be 0. Okay, that's basically how it works. The second row down, input A is 0, input B is 1. Okay, so in theory, if I just go back to my, um, my logically here, or my, uh, uh, my website, we've said input A is 0, input B is 1, we can see output Q is 0. Okay, so when you're filling out these truth tables, if you're not sure, it's worth sitting down with either this website or logically building the circuit uh, and then just turning the inputs on as they appear as you read across the um, as you read across the row. 
So the next one, input A is 1, input B is 0, so the output Q will be 0. And finally, input A is 1, input B is 1, well both of those are 1 now, so the output Q is going to be 1. Okay, that is all there is to truth tables. Okay, so let's have a go. Okay, now as we go through these truth tables, uh, I'm going to introduce you to these little symbols here. Um, as well as needing to learn the um, circuit diagrams for these um, logic gates, you also need to know the symbols that represent them in Boolean equations. So instead of writing A and B like that, we do A and then we use this symbol here, looks like an upside down V, uh, to represent AND, A and B. Now the way that I remember this is it kind of looks like an A without a line across it. So if you see a symbol like that, you think, oh, okay, and. Okay, so uh, I've just gone through this truth table, but we'll do it again. Uh, if A is 0 and B is 0, the output is going to be 0. See if you can answer these before I type them in. If I've got A is 0 and B is 1, the output is going to be 0. If I've got A is 1 and B is 0, the output is going to be 0 and if A is 1 and B is 1 the output is going to be 1. Okay, simple, right? So the next one, OR. Okay, now remember the OR gate the OR gate uh, will only be um, on if either of these is on. If, if they're off the output's going to be 0. Okay, so just going back to our truth table here if A is 0 and B is 0, the output will be 0. If A is 0 and B is 1, that means one of them is on, the output is going to be 1. If A is 1 and B is 0, one of them is on, that means the output must be 1. Okay, and if A is 1 and B is 1, remember this is a OR gate, so the output must be one. If either one of them is on, the output is on. Okay. Now the easiest of the lot is not, and that symbol there, which you can, um, which you can draw by pressing Shift and the key to the left of the one button. Um, did I see? That's my left, but it's your right. So, yeah, whatever. Um, that means not, okay? Not A. And the truth table for not is dead simple. If A is 0, Q is going to be 1. And if A is 1, Q is going to be 0. Now you'll notice that the truth table for um, not A only has two rows. That's because it only has one input, okay? If we've got two inputs, we're going to have four rows. How many inputs are we going to have if we... Sorry, how many rows are we going to have if we have three inputs? There's a question for you. If you said six, you're wrong. If you said eight, you're right. Okay. It's like the magic numbers of binary. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, etc, etc. Um, but, as I understand it, you're only ever really going to have two inputs into a, uh, into a system that the, uh, that the exam board will ask you at GCSE level. Okay, um, That really it is kind of all you really need to know. For in terms of the, uh, the logic gates, a lot of it comes down to practice. Um, so, here's something that I wanted to show you, right? Inside the CPU, and this is like a little bit extra, uh, but it should help, help deepen your understanding of this, and it's a little bit of a task for you to try out, okay? Inside the CPU, we have billions of these uh, logic circuits arranged in order to do various calculations um, on, our, on our data. Okay. Now, um, on the most basic level, being able to add two bits together—that's uh, like that's the fundamental, if you like, um, 
process which goes on in your computer. Now I've got down here the truth table for what's called a half adder. If we're adding two bits together, think about it. Uh, I am going to do a video on binary addition, um, but uh, hopefully you can recall some of this. Um, naught plus naught equals naught. Simple. All right. I'm just going to try and adjust. There we go. Um, naught plus one equals one. Naught plus uh, sorry one plus naught equals one, and one plus one equals naught and carry one. Okay. So our half adder is going to have two inputs, A and B. Those are the things that are being added together. Okay, and it's going to have two outputs, one for the sum. Okay, so what the uh, well, the value that goes underneath those, if you like, when you're when you're writing them out, and one for the carry. Here's the truth table here. If input A is zero and input B is zero, that's like saying zero plus zero. The output is going to be zero and the carry is going to be zero. If the input A is zero and that input uh, B is one, the sum is going to be one. The carry is going to be zero. If we've got one plus zero here, the output is going to be one and the uh, sorry the sum output is going to be 1 and the carry output is going to be 0 and finally if we've got 1 plus 1 the sum will be 0 and the carry will be 1 okay now I want you to have a go at constructing a um, logic circuit for this truth table use logically okay so um, the way to go about it treat the output and uh, sorry the output of the sum and the output of the carry as two separate truth tables so ignoring this whole column here just look at this truth table here if input naught uh, input a is naught and input b is naught the output carry is going to be naught a is naught b is one output naught uh, a is one b is naught output naught a is 1, B is 1, output 1. That looks very similar to a truth table that we've already looked at in this video. Okay, so if necessary, just pause, go back, have a look at the, um, uh, the, the truth tables that we've gone over. And your inputs are going to feed into a single logic gate which produces this output. Now, those inputs are also going to feed into a second uh, logic gate, which is going to produce this output. Now, this output is slightly different to any of the truth tables that we've uh, seen in this video. Slightly different, but it is a gate which I have mentioned. Okay, so if they are both off, the output is off. If either one of them is on, the output is going to be on. If they're both on, the output is off. I have mentioned it. Okay, I've gone over it a couple of times. Okay, so let's go to logically here, um, and I will get rid of this lot here. We are going to have two outputs: one for the um, sum and one for the carry. We only have two inputs. Now we can add labels. I drag a, a label down here. Let's change that so it's a and let's have another label here and we can change that so that it's B uh, actually that makes more logical sense to have them around this way so there's our A and B we also need to have a sum and we need to have a carry okay so we've got sum, we've got carry, we've got A, we've got B Having a look at that truth table, think. What gate do A and B need to go into in order to feed out to the carry? What gate do they need to go into to feed out to the sum? Okay. Pause the video. Have a crack at hooking up the carry. Okay, and then resume, and I will show you what mine looks like. Okay, so um, I will build it here. Uh, so we need to use 
an AND gate because if you look at the truth table for um, the half adder the carry output not 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 one it's only one if both of them are one therefore it's an AND gate now the sum kind of looks like an OR gate okay so that's something for you to think about pause it again see if you can come up with that other um, uh, with that other gate in there and once again I shall build it here <laughs> we are going to use an XOR gate okay so now we can test this out remember we've got our um, truth table here and we've got our rules of addition down uh, here in my uh, in my text window uh, so let's try it out uh, if we've got a is naught and b is naught the sum should be naught and the carry should be naught okay if a is one and b is one the sum should be one there it is and the carry should be naught if b is one and a is naught the sum should be one and the carry should be naught and if they are both one, if A and B are both one, the sum should be naught and the carry should be one. And there we go, we see that is what's going on. Okay, now that's not quite all we need to add um, to uh, bits because sometimes you might have a carry as well. Because remember, sometimes you have one plus one plus one, which equals one and carry one. Okay, and the way that we would join that together is by having two of these um, half adders uh, working together. I will not show you how to do that now because it's not really uh, relevant to what you need to know but feel free to um, have a crack at it yourself um, and maybe I will show you a solution in a upcoming video. Okay, so uh, this video is uh, a little bit shorter than the uh, than the previous one, uh, but there seems to be less to less to really go over. Um, things that you need to remember: um, you need to remember the um, symbols for all of the logic gates. Now, remember the only ones that you need to know are and, um, or, and not. Uh, and or and not; those are the ones that you need to know. You also need to know those. Um, the symbols uh, that represent and or a not in a boolean equation okay so a and b a or b and there you got not a now something else has just uh, popped into my mind here um, because you might be given something like this uh, let's say uh, it might be a question that says draw the circuit diagram for the following um, boolean uh, equation. So you might have uh, Q equals A uh, and not B, not B, something like that. A and not B. Okay, so you need to think, well, okay, how is that going to work? How is that going to work? So you need to look at the symbols. Remember, each symbol is going to have its own gate, right? So let's try and process what's going on here. We have an AND gate. Either side of the AND gate, we have what's going into that AND gate. So we have an AND gate. On one side, we have A, and on the other side, we have NOT B. Okay, so NOT B, the NOT gate needs to go before the B, NOT B, okay, and then that needs to feed back into uh, an AND gate with A on the other side. If it seems confusing, don't panic. Okay, let's go through this logically. So, uh, haha, logically, see what I said there. Um, so, let's just uh, get rid of all of this lot here. So, we've got A and B. I should probably label that one Q there. Okay, so we know we need to have an AND gate. Okay, and the output is going to Q. We know that one side of that AND gate is going into A because we've got Q equals A and not B. Okay, um, 
So one side is definitely going into A. Now the other side is not B. So we've got to get our not gate in there. Okay, not B. Sometimes you have to think about the order that these things go in. Let's try another one. Okay, let's uh, let's try another one. So we will do um, Q equals um, A or B. Let's make that a little bit nicer. And not B uh, and A. Let's let's try that. Now this is way more complicated than the ones you will get on the um, uh, on the exam paper, but I'm throwing it in there for some practice. Okay. Now what I want you to do before I go through this, okay, I want you to have a go in logically of uh, building that circuit. Now remember things to bear in mind each one of these symbols is its own gate. Okay. Now the what the brackets mean is that the whole of that, the output from that section is going into this gate. The output from that section or the whole of that is going to go through a NOT gate and then go into and then go into this. Okay. Now I'm hoping that's not too confusing, but I want you to have a crack at it. Break it down, decompose it, work on it in sections. Okay. Build A or B first of all. Right? And then build uh, B and A. Okay? And then you can start feeding them both into that AND gate. Okay? So feel free to pause the video and then come back. Uh, meanwhile, let me build this uh, circuit here. Okay? So I'm going to delete the stuff which is on here at the moment. Uh, so we've got A and B there. Uh, so first of all, we need an A or B. So we're going to need an OR gate. Okay? There is A or B. Okay, that covers this first bit. Brilliant. Now we need a B and A, so we're going to need another AND gate down here, um, and that's B and A. Yeah. Now the whole of that needs to go through a NOT gate. So get my NOT gate on there. There we go. Now. I'm going to move Q out of the way here because this is getting a little bit crowded. The output from A or B and the output from uh, B, not B and A needs to go into an AND gate. Okay, so the AND gate goes in there, we get the output from there and the output from there. You know what, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so I can space this out so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. Okay, um, And that there is our circuit. Okay, If that's what you built then rock and roll. If it's not, okay, it might be worth you just going back uh, and, uh, and, and practicing trying a few uh, a few other ones out. I will give you a couple more for you to to try out. <laughs> and uh, effectively, what we've built in a bizarre haphazard fashion is an exclusive OR. So you can see here when A is off and B is off, the the light is off. When A is on, the light is on. When B is on, the light is on and uh, when they are both on the light is off there you go so anyway uh, let's try let's try one more let's do uh, Q uh, equals um, B or uh, A and B and uh, Uh, let's say not not b. Right, this this is a this is a nonsense circuit, but I'm I'm doing it so that you can so that you can have a go at building it. Okay, that's the final one. 
for this video. So pause the video, have a go. Remember, each symbol is a single gate. So we're going to have an OR gate, we're going to have an AND gate, we're going to have another OR gate, we're going to have a NOT gate. Those are the gates that we are going to have. We've still only got two inputs, A and B. Okay, so think about how that will go together. So pause it, have a go at building it, come back, and let's go through it. Right, okay, so we have got an A and B. I'm going to build that first, just like with um, with maths. Do the brackets first. Uh, so we've got an A and B. Boom. There's A and B. Okay, and we've got a B or A and B. So the output from A and B and B is going to into an OR gate there. This is a silly this is a silly circuit. Um, so we've now done that bit. What's left? We've got another AND gate but we've also got NOT B here. So we need a NOT gate. Yeah, B goes into NOT B uh, and that's both going into an AND gate. There's my AND gate. Uh, so B or A and B and not B. There. Um, and that's just <laughs> blocking everything. It's a nonsense. Like I said, it was made up on the spot. Uh, but hopefully it was it gave you practice enough for you to build some of these um, these compound circuits now bear in mind the sorts of questions that you're going to get on the actual exam paper is going to be um, draw the uh, the circuit for this uh, Q equals um, a and B or you might have three you might have or C in there okay um, in which case you're going to have uh, something like this, but it's it's not going to be any more uh, complex than that. Okay, so let's say this is this is C here. Um, there is C, uh, A and B or C. A and B or C there. okay that's really the extent of it you're gonna have two gates max you know um, three inputs absolute max it's it, it should be fairly straightforward I've given you overly complex ones for you to practice with uh, so hopefully that it, it, it sinks in now bear in mind you've got logically is freely available um, through your browser uh, my uh, binary logic gates website is there at binary triple six dot co dot uk uh, you can try that out play around with it feel free to ask questions about anything you don't understand um, but ultimately if you know the symbols if you know the uh, algebraic symbols and you know how to construct truth tables that's that's all you need okay uh, thank you very much for watching and um, we will be back soon with another video